Hi, this is Mrs. La Barbara. This is Physics Chapter Eight, Video Three. Today's topic is methods of charging. The objectives are uh, know the difference between charging by friction, charging by conduction, and charging by induction. So those are the different methods of charging: friction, conduction, and induction. You need to understand the concept of elect electron affinity that's associated with friction and its effect on how charge moves between materials. And to understand the law of conservation of charge holds for all methods of charging. Be able to explain the process of induction, that's also called polarization. Be able to explain how charged objects behave when they are grounded. And be able to explain how electroscope works. And be able to select, sketch, diagrams in which object is polarized by a charged object or one object is charged by conduction or uh, to be able to sketch the diagrams um, which include the direction of charge flows. Let's first let's see charging by friction. So when the two objects are wrapped together, electrons may be transferred from one object to another. So not only touching, you have to rub it together. This is called the charging by friction. So one object can gain electron, and the other one lose electron. So say if the one object gains five electrons, the other one has to lose five electrons. So both would have the same charge, but opposite. So in this process, the law of conservation of charge still holds. The total amount of charge among the of the object is the same before the process of rubbing together and as it is after the process ends. So here is the wall and the PVC pipe. As you can see, the PVC pipe gained the electron in this process. But if you use the same wall to rubber a nylon, now the wall would gain electron. So how does the electron move? So in which way does the electron move? This depends on electron affinity. So electron affinity refers to the relative amount of love that material has for electron. That's what electron affinity means. High affinity means more love. So it's going to pull electrons more. So here is a chart. It's called a tribal electric series chart. On top, loves electron. On the bottom, doesn't care so much. So if you use the fur, a rabbit fur, rub, uh, a rubber rod, so what happens is the rubber is going to gain electron because it loves electron more than the fur. So this, similarly for uh, wood, okay, wood would gain electron and rubber, a rabbit fur will lose electrons. So the things on top loves electrons more than the um, objects on the bottom. So we can find this called a triple electric series in order to figure out which one has, uh, which material will take more electron. So we use a uh, electroscope to detect if an object is charged. So after you charge, after you rub wool, say with PVC pipe, how do you know uh, the object is charged? We can use electroscope. So electroscope is basically a device to detect a charge. How does it do it? It does it by using this rule opposite attract and like repel. So electroscope detects charge through charge interactions. So here is the electroscope. Basically, it has a metal piece, has two leaves, metal. So when it's not working, the two leaves are just hanging out there. But when you put a charged object here, the two leaves is going to repel. When they repel, you know this balloon is charged. Let's see how that works. So here is the electroscope. It was just neutral before. And when you have a positive charge here, it's going to attract the negative electrons up. So on the bottom, you will have a net positive. So positive and positive repel. That's why the leaves repels. Similarly, if you brought a negative charge here, it's going to repel the electrons down. So the electrons on the bottom um, is going to repel each other. That's why the leaves repelling. Charging by conduction. So that was charging by friction. You rub together. Not only touching, you have to rub it. Charging by conduction, on the other hand, is simply by touching. 
each other. So you have a metal. Here is another conductor that's metal. When you touch it, some of the electrons is going to be transferred over here. So, so it's going to give its electrons to the electroscope. In both cases, they are both conductors. You must have both two conductors in order to charge by conduction. So before, suppose before you have 10 charges here, after together it's still 10 charges. So the law of conservation of charge, total amount of charge before is the same as after. Let's take a look. Two metal sphere having a charge of a positive four times 10 to negative six and two times 10 to negative five coulombs respectively. So after brought into contact and then separated, the charge on each sphere, because they are identical, so charges should be identical. How do you find a charge on each sphere? You simply add the two together and divide by two. You'll find the average. So the answer is number four. You add these two numbers, divide by two. So basically they share the electrons. Now a physics student standing on the ground touching an uncharged, uncharged plastic baseball to a negatively charged electroscope. This will of course, remember, plastic baseball is not a conductor, so you cannot charge by conduction. So what happens? In this case, absolutely nothing happens because plastic bat, baseball bat, does, does not conduct. The last method of charging is charging by induction or polarization. So first, what is induction? What is polarization? So induction or polarization, induction as the name implies, is inducing the movement of electrons within an object by a charged object. The result is a separation of charge within the neutral object. Let's take a look, you have a neutral Coke can. So if you have put a negatively charged balloon near it, it's going to repel the negative to the other end. So one end would be positively charged, the other end would be negatively charged. But as a whole, this uh, Coca-Cola can has, is neutral. So similarly, here is another one. So here is an object. When you bring the positively charged balloon near it, the this object is going to be polarized. So polarized means separation of charges. One side is going to be negative, the other side becomes positive. This one does not mean the positive charged protons move to that side. We know protons cannot move. It's the electron that moves. The electrons is move to one side and leave the other side as a negative positive charge. So as a whole, this as a whole, the object as a whole is neutral. It's not charged. It's just merely the charge are separated or polarized. An insulator can also be polarized. So take a look at the insulator. Instead of the charge moving all the way to the other side, it's just redistributed. So the negative charge goes to the other side. So this is a balloon, usually balloon attached to the wall is an insulator. So a positively charged balloon will uh, polarize the wall, right? Uh, attract the negative charge close to it. And that is why the balloon can stick to the wall. You can rub the balloon on your hair or on your clothes. You can stick to the wall. The balloon will stay there. This is why the neutral object attract charged object because of polarization. Here is a water stream of water falling. If you put a balloon next to the water, you probably have seen this demonstration in chemistry. Now you can see the balloon bends the water. This is why the, the water molecules is polarized. So the negative charge will attract the positive hydrogen and repel the negative oxygen to the other side. That's why the, the water bends. Let's do a couple of examples. Here's a balloon to the wall. So which one uh, represent the charge distribution of the balloon correctly on the wall? So the balloon is negatively charged. The wall has to be polarized. So the answer has to be D. Okay, a charged body may cause temporary, temporary redistribution of charge on another body without coming into contact with it. This process is called induction.
Okay, another example. So here is a metal positive uh, charged rod bring to the three conducting spheres. How is the charge going to distribute in the spheres? Okay, remember the spheres are conducting so that to the electron, there is no boundaries between. So the answer would be B, okay? Because the charge, the electrons does not stop at a boundary. It will keep going. The electrons doesn't see boundaries. So the answer is B. Now, again, let's go back to charging by induction. So charging by induction is charge an object without actually touching the object uh, to the other uh, object being charged. The three things are involved. The first, it never touches. So there is no charge transfer between the object charged and the object being charged. The charge of the object is only to serve to polarize the object being charged. Where is the charge coming from? The charge is coming from ground. Ground means earth. <coughs> the object being charged ultimately receive a charge that is opposite to the charge of, um, say the blue is negative, the, the object will have a positive charge. The charge is opposite. Let's take a look at uh, electroscope. So you have a negative charge is going to repel all the electrons on to the bottom. This is called a grounding. When you touch it, all the excess charge is transferred to the ground. When you remove your hand first, okay, now you remove the balloon, the positive charge is going to redistribute. That means the electrons is going to move like evenly. So the whole thing is being positive charged. Realize blue is negative. As a result, the electroscope is a positive charge. So this other process is just what I said. Okay, first polar, polarizing, grounding, then redistribution of charge is opposite as the balloon. Okay, grounding is, what's ground? Grounding is remove all the excess of charge. Grounding is using the earth. So earth, basically is a reservoir think about earth as a sink it can supply water and it can take water away so that is ground that's it can supply the charge also take the charges away so here is an object can be charged through grounding how does that work first you polarize second is grounding removing the charge third when you remove your hand you must remove your hand first then you remove the balloon, so the object is charged opposite to the balloon. Charging uh, by induction of two objects. So you have two spheres next to each other. Instead of using your hand, you simply remove this sphere B. Then both sphere A and B are charged. In this case, B is served as a ground. The law of conservation of charge still holds. Before you have a zero, after the total system still is zero. Check your understanding. A positively charged pop can is touched by a person standing on the ground. The pop can subsequently becomes neutral. The pop can becomes neutral during this process because electrons pass from the pop can to the person. No, because the pop can was positively charged. So electron pass from the person to the pop can. That's the choice because it has to neutralize the pop can. Okay, take a look at this. So <clears throat> the electroscope is positively charged, right? As a positive charge, the glass rod is brought near the knob. This is a knob. Another positive come over here, what's going to happen to the leaves? If another positive come here, it's going to attract electrons toward it. So more electrons is going to move up. So on the bottom leaves, it's going to be more positive. Actually, the separation of electroscope is going to increase because on the bottom is going to be become more positive. So the leaves are going to separate more. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you next.